Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. And we thank God for the Word. Yes. Why? Because it gives us the best life when we do it. Yes. Not just when we read it. That's part of it. But our feeding on the Word is to lead us to the doing of the Word. Yes. Amen. Yes. Jesus said it's the doer that's blessed. Yes. So we say we're doers, right? Yes. And thank God we have divine help as we do because the Holy Spirit is called our helper. Yes. He will help us in our doing. And not only that, he encourages us along the way of our doing. Have you ever noticed this? The, the Holy Spirit is not called the doer. Right. That's right. We're to do. Yes. And he will help us in our doing. And as we do our part, then he will perform his part, Amen. God's part. Amen. And so it's an honor to study and feed on the word together so we can all learn to be better doers. Amen. Amen. We've been looking in the past episodes, the previous episodes, about something about how to speed up our manifestation. When we release our faith, once our faith is released, God's power always begin, begins working. Amen. Why? Because power always meets faith. Yes. Amen. <clears throat> so once we release our faith, God goes to work. Right. But we don't want to get in the, in the way of the flow of his power. Right. We don't want to hinder it. Uh, we want to, if I could say this, facilitate mm-hmm. the flow of that power. Amen. We want to speed it up not slow it down. And that's what we've been looking at. So we invite you to go back to the previous episodes and see what was taught. And then we're going to go further today. One of the things that will slow down this, the uh, manifestation of your answer, once you release faith in God for a need to be met, one of the things, the primary things that will slow down a manifestation is wrong thinking. When we think wrong. And how many of you know the enemy is constantly trying to inject wrong thinking or interject wrong thinking into our thought life? He always offers you thoughts that are uh, in opposition to the word. We have part of the skill of faith is recognizing thoughts that are not in line with the word. But sometimes we have adopted a way of thinking that we don't recognize is in the way mm-hmm. of the flow of God's power. Right. Amen. Uh, God never withholds his power, but things can get in the way and interrupt. Yes. Yes. And if I could say this, hinder the flow of God's power. Amen. So we have to address our thinking. Yes. When, when you're standing in faith, thanking God for the answer of what you've released your faith for, Many times the Holy Spirit will start talking to you about something. What's he doing? He's helping you to get rid of anything that would hinder the flow of God's power. So pay attention to what he starts dealing with you about. Let me give you an example. Years ago, um, my goodness, this has been in my 20s, um, almost 40 years ago now. Um, I had gone to the doctor and they wanted to put me on medication for some, some symptoms I was having. And as a young believer and uh, really new, newer to the faith message, the healing message, I had the thought, if I go on medicine, that means I don't have faith. That's what I thought. Yes. Now, so when they, when they said, you need to go on this medication, I was like, no, 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 because, that, and then it almost got to a, a, in making a decision of whether to go on the medication, I got, I get in, I got into fear yeah. mm-hmm. because if I take it, I, that's saying I don't have faith and 
I can only be healed by faith. You know, I can receive by faith. So I was thinking I'm not going on the medication because that is showing I don't have faith. Um, my husband said something that helped me. He said, Nancy, he said, it's not the withholding of medicine that pleases God. It's faith. Now listen to that. It's not the withholding of medicine that pleases God. It's faith that pleases God. So what was he saying? Basically, he was saying, you can withhold medicine, but if you're not in faith, you still won't be pleasing to God. But you can go on medicine, not use your faith, and not be pleasing to God. Or you can go on medicine and use your faith. It's the faith that pleases God. So whether you're taking medicine or not taking medicine, use your faith. (laughs) Add your faith. And that's what he was saying. He said, you're struggling over the medicine. It's not the medicine. It's the, are you using your faith? So the Holy Spirit, a couple of days later, when I was still holding this up before God, the Holy Spirit, it was, see, my thing was there again, I thought if I don't, if I, if I go on medicine, I'm saying I don't have faith. Right. The Holy Spirit helped me because that was wrong thinking. Right. Yes. He's trying to get me to a place of receiving my manifestation, right. not hindering it yes. uh, for my manifestation, my healing to come in a manifestation, not slow it down. So he said this to me, the Holy Spirit spoke. And he said, go on the medicine, but while you're on it, feed your faith. Mm-hmm. Amen. And mm-hmm. when your faith gets to the level or the place it needs to be, he said, I'll tell you when to come off the medicine. Yes. Oh. Now listen to that. I have a divine prescription there. Amen. Amen. That means heaven's getting involved in making the calls in my physical body. Yes. It's not just me making a decision and boy, I hope this is right. Yes. No, we have a helper. That's right. He will counsel yes. us and, and advise us even in medical help. Yes. Now, how many of you know it's best to not need medical help, but it's not failure to need medical help as long as we apply our faith. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 And we're all growing to the point to where it's, it's best that we don't ever need it. But we're all growing and developing in faith and becoming more skillful. So it's not about whether you're using medicine, it's whether you're using faith. Yes. Amen. Amen. And people many times will throw out their medicine to prove they have faith. Mm. You don't have to prove you have faith by throwing something out. You just stand in faith and things will start manifesting. Right. Amen. So Amen. Yes. Now, If God tells you to throw out your medicine, then do it because then you're acting on divine help. The Holy Spirit giving you counsel. Amen. Amen. So the Spirit told me, he said, go on the medicine and I'll tell you when to come off, but feed your faith. Release your faith. So I did that. Every day there were certain scriptures on healing that I meditated on and fed on, Mm -hmm. and I put in my mouth. I released them out of my mouth. I took claim of them personally. Amen. Mm -hmm. I made them my personal possession Mm -hmm. by speaking them. Mm -hmm. At the end of about three to four months, one day I was in the midst of doing my daily habit of doing that, and the Spirit of God said to me, you can come off the medication now. Mm -hmm. He said, there will be a little bit of an opposition, but you're ready. Meaning this, that opposition won't trouble you. Yes. That's right. wow. Amen. In fact, I barely even noticed mm, what the opposition tried to bring after I went off the medication. Yes. What's that mean? The Holy Spirit will help us to reach, if I could say this, receive our manifestation quicker yes. if we'll cooperate with Him. Yes. What is it that hinders God's power, wrong thinking. See, I was thinking wrong about that. I thought I couldn't go on medication, but the Holy Spirit was my helper. So in helping me to think the right thoughts, he was helping speed up the manifestation on my part of what, what I could do. It wasn't, it wasn't that 
God was slow, it was wrong thinking would get in the way of the power of God. Yes. Now, Amen. I want to read to you something that Kenneth E. Hagan, now he was our spiritual father for decades. And he, uh, he made this statement once. He said, realize that receiving the answer or the manifestation may depend on you. See, we think it's all up to God. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus said, so be it done unto you according to your faith. Mm -hmm. So evidently we do have a part. We're not the ones who perform the miracle or the answer, mm -hmm. but we do cooperate with the power that performs it, yes. right? Amen. And so he goes on and he says this, the manifestation can come faster. Ah, I'm interested, oh, right? Yes. The manifestation can come faster if the word of God is, root, is strongly rooted in you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then he quoted this, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, your faith is stronger if you have a lot of the word in you. Yes. Then he said this, that's the reason I don't even pray or release my faith about some things for several days until I have examined the word carefully on that subject. Amen. Now, notice, if you need healing, then focus on healing scriptures. Don't focus on Jesus' second coming scriptures. <laughs> Right? Yes. Feed in line with your need. Yes. Amen. Don't just read randomly through the Bible and say, well, I'm feeding my faith. Well, you're going to have to feed it specifically in line with your need. Yes. That's right. Amen. That's what Dad Hagen said. When I have a need, I will take several days and I'll feed on the word in that direction. That's right. What's he doing? He's making sure that he's filled with that word. Right not just partially full, but overflowing. Why? Because when you're full, it's easier to cooperate with God. That's right. That's right. It said that Abraham was fully persuaded that God was able to perform mm -hmm. Amen. what he said. Notice he wasn't partially persuaded. Mm -hmm. He was fully persuaded. Amen. Take time to get full of the word. Then when you release that word, it'll come out with great force. Yes. Amen. So, um, he said, that's the reason I don't even pray about some things for several days until I've examined the word carefully on the subject. Keep examining the word. Then he said, keep meditating on it. That means think about it. Put it in your mouth, mutter it, think deeply into it. Let it roll around on the inside of you. Get it in your heart. Then he went on and said this, sometimes I have gone for days meditating on just one scripture. Notice this for us. It's not about how many, how many verses or chapters we read. It's about how much we get in us. Yes. Amen. It's not about how much runs through our eye gates. It's how much gets in our hearts. So he said, sometimes I have gone for days meditating on just one scripture. After three or four days, I have found that faith was so strong in me, I could not doubt if I wanted to because the word had built something into me. So Amen. Mm. Amen. Then he quoted John 15, 7, 15, 7. If you abide in me, look at this, and my words abide in you. What's that mean? They're alive in you. Mm -hmm. They're living in you. Yes. They're fresh in you. Yes. You shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Yes. So you see, it's after the word gets in you that you're able to pray and receive effectively. Amen. 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 How we treat the word, it matters. It matters to um, how quickly the power of God can manifest in our, in our behalf. I want to read something that E.W. Kenyon writes. If, he, if you don't have any of his materials, my, 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 they're, they're rich. But he, he writes this in keeping with this subject. He said, our attitude toward the word determines the place that God holds in our daily life. Wow. Oh, that's Not Amen. just the place God holds at a time of emergency, yes. but in our daily life. Amen. He writes this, the word should always be the father speaking to us. That's how we're to see it. Yes. What's that mean? It's personal. Yes. Yes. It's not just something said long ago, recorded long ago. He's saying it to us now. Right. 
The word should always be the father speaking to us. It should never be like the message from an ordinary book. It should be as real to you as though the master stood in the room and spoke it to you personally. Yes. What's this mean? Take ownership of that word. Yes. Put your name in those passages. Yes. Right. It's specific to you. Right. Then he writes, this word was designed by the father to take Jesus's place in his absence. Wow. He said this, it imparts faith to my spirit and builds love into it. God's only means of reaching me is through his word. You say, well, I thought he could reach me through his spirit. You know how his spirit speaks to you? The word. (laughs) He will speak the word to you. So it's either the written word or the spoken word Mm -hmm. that comes to you and changes you and gives you understanding and gives you clarity, gives you direction. So it's correct when he said God's only means of reaching me is through the word. It's through the written word or the spoken word. That's right. So he writes this, so, fa- so the word becomes a vital thing. If something is vital, you can't do without it. Right, right. that's right. Um, even in our physical bodies, there are what is called vital organs, mm-hmm. meaning you can't live without these. Life cannot go on if you're missing these. If the heart is not working, it won't work. The body won't work. You can't keep living without vital organs. What if for somebody, if somebody were to lose a finger or a hand, that's not a vital organ. You can live without that. Mm -hmm. But there are some things that are vital in your body that your life cannot go on if they're not working. Even so, in your spiritual life, there are things that are vital. Mm -hmm. I love something that I heard one minister uh, or read something that they had stated and said, Faith is a vital organ to your spiritual life. Faith is a vital organ to your spiritual life. Meaning without it, you can't conduct business with God. You cannot advance spiritually without faith. You can't fulfill the plan of God without faith. You can't move with God without faith. Why? Because it takes faith to move with God. It takes faith to fulfill his plan in your life. It takes faith to receive answers. It takes faith to pray because you're talking to someone you can't see. Amen. Amen. So he says this, the word becomes a vital thing. What's that mean? You can't receive without it. It's impossible. So that means we don't treat the word as disposable. Amen. Amen. Then he, E.W. Kenyon quoted 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Wherefore, I also give continual thanks to God because when you heard from me the spoken word of God, you received it. Not as the word of man, but as it is in truth, the word of God, who himself works effectually in you that believe. So Kenyon makes this statement, only the living word in the lips of faith can take the place of an absent Christ. Only the living word in the lips of faith can take the place of an absent Christ. The word talks to us. It takes the place of Jesus. So if you want to hear Jesus, hear the word. Jesus and the word are one. Jesus, the word made flesh. The word is the father speaking to us now. Meaning this, people would say, if if God would just show up, if Jesus show up and tell me what to do, um, that doesn't give you faith. Because you see him. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's his word that gives you faith. Yes. Amen. There are people that saw Jesus throughout his earthly ministry and still didn't believe him. That's true. That's true. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. There were religious leaders. They opposed him. They saw the word. They heard him. They saw miracles. And even though they saw, they still wouldn't believe because it's not seeing that's believing. It's believing words that gives you faith. Amen. So don't, don't get caught on I, if he would just show up, if he would just appear to me, that wouldn't give you faith. That's right. You have to believe words. You have to believe words. You have to believe what he says. You know, if we say we love God 
and we do. I know you do. I know I do. We love God, then that means we're going to believe him. How could we ever just say to someone, I love you, but I don't believe a word you say? <laughs> Something's off. Yes. Right? We, if we say we love him, we say we believe him. That's right. I believe what he says. If he says that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, I believe that. Why? Because he said it. He said it. So um, it said, uh, E.W. Kenyon writes, it takes, the word takes the place of Jesus for the word is the father speaking to us now. It has the same authority that it would have if the master stood in the room and spoke it to you personally. Faith in the father is faith in his word. The word takes on all that our faith demands. What does that mean? The word takes on all that our faith demands. When you by faith call him healer, he, he becomes healer to you. Right. Yes. When you call him provider, he becomes provider. Mm-hmm. You call him answer giver, he's your answer giver. Oh, that's right. That's right. He becomes all you believe him to be. Yes. Yes. Amen. You don't receive something just because he is that. You receive something because you believe he is that. Amen. Did you know he's the savior of every man? Yes. Every man, but not every man calls him savior. That's right. That's right. That's right. So they go without what he is because they don't agree with him. Amen. Did you know that he is the healer of every man, but not every man's healed? That's right. That's right. Because some people don't believe in healing. I mean, some have been taught that God doesn't heal anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, right. he can only be to you what you believe him to be. Yes. Amen. Amen. He wants to be everything because he's provided everything, yes. but we can hinder him being to us what he was made to be to us until we call him that. Yes. Call him healer. Amen. He'll be healer. Amen. Call him provider. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So he said this, the word takes on all that our faith demands. Jesus said, according to your faith, so be it done unto you. Mm-hmm. Amen. So when we have faith that he's our healer, that's what he can be. Yes. Yes. Then E.W. Kenyon goes on and says this, as you consider the word and act on it, it will become real to you. Yes. You know, the word doesn't become real to us until we experience it. That's true. That's and how does it, be, how do we experience it? We, we become doers of it. Yes. Amen. Amen. This book, the living word has God in it. <laughs> the word takes the place of the unseen Jesus. Meditation in the word is like a visit with Jesus. Wow. Joshua chapter one and verse eight, God told Joshua to meditate in the word day and night. In other words, live in it. Yes. Make yes. it a flow of your lifestyle. Yes. Amen. Jesus said in John 8, verse 31, abide in my word. Then E.W. Kenyon says this, the word gets into your blood, into your system, and it becomes a part of you. Wow, 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 wow. So the more we put that word in us, the more our faith is strongly rooted. And what happens? The power of God meets faith. And we can speed up our manifestation by how we treat the word. If we neglect the word, we slow down the manifestation of our miracle. If we give our full attention to the word, we can speed up our manifestation of our miracle. We speed up our manifestation by feeding on the word and having our attention on the word. Or we can slow it down by being swayed by circumstances, having our attention on the problem, having our attention on our body. You say, Pastor Nancy, how do you take your attention off your body when it's hurting? You put something else in front of you. You have to get a fuller measure of the word, the healing word going. Amen. And you say, I know what I feel, but it doesn't change what I believe. Amen. You choose not to let what you feel change what you believe. You know, when those of us who have been taught healing, we believe we're healed. We are the healed. That's not what we're trying to get. That's who we are. We are the healed. Um, 
We believe we were healed when there were no symptoms. When, if symptoms come, don't let them change what you believe. You still believe you are the healed. That's being fully persuaded. Amen. Amen. So if we put our attention on opposition, on circumstances, on symptoms, on feelings, it's, we're not trying to not feel something. It's not up to us to get rid of feelings. It's up to us to not put our attention on them. Hold our attention on the word, on the word, on the word. If there's a lot that we're feeling, then we have to have a lot of word going in. Amen. 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 Not only that, a lot of word coming out. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter three, verse 16 says this, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. What's that mean? A great measure. Mm -hmm. So let there be a great measure of the word dwelling in you in all wisdom. In other words, fill up with the word. When you get full of the word, it just starts coming out. If we can know this, if we're not thinking to say the word, Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not overflowing yet. We need to fill up because when this, this cup right here, if it was filled up with water and overflowing, I don't have to put any effort into it coming out. I just put an effort to filling it up and it will automatically start flowing out. You can listen to your, we can listen to our mouth and know how full we are. Is the word coming out or is the problem coming out of our mouth? Well, we're going to keep going this direction and thank God for the word. It's helping us all. We're learning. Amen. We invite you to join us next time. And until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. When God increases you, every arena of your life will increase. In this book, I Have a Supply by Nancy Dufresne, you will learn how rich and unending your supply is from God and how to make it a reality in your everyday life. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne inviting you to join us in Murrieta, California at World Harvest Church for our annual Holy Ghost meetings. The dates are January the 5th through the 10th. We're inviting everyone to go to our website at DufresneMinistries.org and register. We look forward to seeing you there. God bless you. In this classic book by Nancy Dufresne, The Healer Divine, we are presented with a study of the healings of Jesus. Your faith will be stirred to believe and act as the healed God has already made you to be. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. Every one of us have a job to do in the body of Christ. It's a new day of stepping into places in the Spirit that will bring us into a greater flow. They come for anything else but to help people. A fresh momentum that hits a stride. What is the job of the body of Christ? It's to set people free, get people healed, get people saved. Can you say amen? Hitting a stride in the spirit realm in healing and in gifts of healings. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, President of Dufresne Ministries. I want to extend an invitation to you to become a partner with Dufresne Ministries today. The vision of Dufresne Ministries is to move with the Word and the Spirit as we bring the message of faith and God's healing power to this generation. 
Partnership is a two-way street. We commit to bring the uncompromised Word of God to you, and you can, by faith, become a partaker of the grace upon this ministry. Then our partners bring their prayer and support. If you receive from this ministry and have been blessed by it, please pray about becoming a partner today. God bless you. Some of the arms of the ministry that you'll support include a traveling ministry with crusades and conferences held nationwide and abroad, the printing and publishing of books, CDs, and DVDs to get this message out, Fresh Oil Fellowship, a ministerial organization for the encouragement of five-fold ministers who desire to flow with the Word and the Spirit, TV and other media broadcasts, that reach various parts of the world. Our Jesus the Healer television broadcast is currently on six different networks, potentially reaching 329 million households. Benefits you receive from partnership include a 20% discount on all Dufresne Ministries products, a monthly partner letter from Nancy Dufresne, consistent ministry updates and communication, and the prayer of agreement with our partners. Be a part in carrying out the vision. Pray about becoming a legacy partner today. For more information, go to our website at defrainministries.org.